Hey, this is Bethany with Photographer Overnight, and today I'm going to show you my basic retouching that I do after a portrait session to make my subjects pop. Now, this bride is already beautiful, so I'm not going to be doing any extreme makeover. I like to keep my changes subtle, so it doesn't look like someone went to town with Photoshop. And now, I always shoot in RAW, so we're going to start in the RAW editing program with sliders that you would also find if you're using Lightroom. But don't worry if you're working with a JPEG, because I'm also going to show you these things in Photoshop. So I just quickly warm up the picture a little with the temperature slider here, and then I increase the vibrance a little here. Then I want this picture to be a little more close up, so if I'm going to crop the picture, I make sure to do that in RAW as well, because it will maintain a lot more pixel information than cropping it after I convert it to a JPEG. So if you hold down on the crop tool here, you'll see the different crop ratios we have here. Your 2 to 3 is going to be like your 20 by 30 or your 12 by 18. So that's more of a widescreen full frame crop. But if you're going to be printing 8 by 10s or 16 by 20s, you'll want to use this 4 to 5 ratio. So I'm just going to keep it at 2 to 3 because my camera is a full frame camera. And then we'll just crop it a little bit closer. Now, I normally do the rest of my facial retouching in Photoshop, but the RAW program does have a spot removal tool that works pretty well, so I'll show you how to work that really quickly. So up here you'll see the spot removal tool. We'll just click that, and then I'm going to zoom in a little so I can see what I'm doing. And this works really well for getting rid of any freckles or acne or things that you don't want in the picture. So if you click and drag, it creates a circle where the spot will be removed from and you can move this so that it covers your spot more evenly. And then the green circle is where it's pulling your new skin from. And then if you just click and drag, it'll create a new circle, and the green circle is where it's pulling from. So this works pretty well, but the spot removal in Photoshop's a little easier, so I'm gonna show you how to do this in Photoshop as well. And then if you wanna see a before and after, you can get rid of these circles by clicking show the overlay and then you'll be able to see the changes you've made by clicking the preview checkbox here. So the other thing that you can use in RAW for skin retouching is the adjustment brush, which will allow you to make changes to small parts of the picture rather than the picture as a whole. So I'm just going to show you an example of what we can do to the eyes here. So we're going to click adjustment brush, and I'm just going to increase the contrast here, bring up the saturation a little bit, increase the clarity, and the sharpness. So with the adjustment brush, I'm just going to paint over the eyes here. Then to see your before and after, you'll see this pin here is a little distracting. So if you uncheck this box right here, it will disappear, and then we can see the changes we've made by clicking the preview box up here. So you can see that's a nice subtle change we made to the eyes to help them pop a little more. And that is about the extent I would do in my raw editing program. So now I'm going to open up the file in Photoshop to do a little more of the retouching work. So we're just going to click open image here. And this will open up my raw file in Photoshop before I convert it to a JPEG. So I'm just going to zoom in on the face a little more here. And we'll show you how to remove spots in Photoshop with the spot removal brush. Up here, if you right click, you'll see the spot healing brush tool, and then you'll see my brush is really small, so if you right click, you can change the brush size. And then you just click, and the spot literally disappears. So it's really easy to do in Photoshop, so I just clean up the face a little bit here with the spot removal tool. And then, I don't know if you can see these really fine lines here. If you want to get rid of those, I make the spot removal brush really small. and just drag all the way across the line like that. Now you'll see in my settings here, I've got the hardness set up pretty high and the spacing about 13%. You can play around with these and see what looks the best when you use the spot removal brush on your picture. And now I'm just going to make my brush a little bit bigger and clean up the shoulder here. And then we're done with the spot removal brush. Now for discoloration of the skin or anything else that's distracting on the face, like this little mark here, I would use a clone brush. And I've got it at 69%, so it's not going to do 100% of the skin here. But we're going to click Alt, where we want to draw from, then we'll be able to remove it with a similar color there. And over here, I'm going to get a little smaller, click Alt up here, and just get rid of some of that darkness there. And then there's a dark spot here, 
that I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to pull from over here and some from down here. I'm going to lower the opacity so it's not so bright. So we've got a more even skin tone and it's really subtle. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is show you how to get some smooth skin without going overboard. Um, I see a lot of new photographers using this skin smoothing method that just looks really bad. So first we're going to hit Ctrl J, which will duplicate our background layer so that the smooth skin is going to be on the layer 1 and we can adjust it to taste. So I'm going to come over here in the menu and select Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to bring this down to 4.5 and hit OK. Now what we're going to do is create a mask where this effect will show through. So down here you'll see this button. You'll click that and that'll create your layer mask, which right now is empty. So I'm going to go edit, fill, and fill it in with black, which is the foreground color. And hit OK. So now our blur is not being applied to any part of our picture. So now I'm going to switch my brush here to white, click on the brush tool, make this a little bigger, and take my opacity down quite a bit. I only use about 30% opacity, so it's a really subtle change. Zoom in a little here. And then always make sure that the hardness of your brush is down to 0% so we can get a really soft edge on your brush. And then I just paint along the areas of the skin that I want smooth. You really want to avoid getting it on the hair so that you don't see this obvious blur. Make sure you're holding down the mouse button the entire time because if you let go and you click again in the same area, rather than having a 30% opacity there, you're now going to have a 60%. So I try to keep the mouse clicked down the entire time I'm working until I move to a new area. Now I always avoid important lines in the face, around the nose, around the eyes, because we want those to be nice and sharp. We don't want those to be blurred out or it'll end up looking really plastic. So I'm going to zoom out a little so you can see the change here. And then if we just unclick this layer one eyeball, you can see the before and after is really subtle. And then I'm going to do the arm down here with a really big brush just to smooth out the skin down here. And that is it for the skin smoothing. So the next thing I'm going to do is hit Ctrl J while on the background layer which creates another background copy. And on this layer I'm going to make her eyes pop just a little bit more. So I'm going to go to Curves and then I'm just brightening the whites and darkening the blacks and hit OK. And I don't want this effect on my entire picture, I just want it on her eyes. So I'm hitting the mask button here. Again, I'm going to fill it in with black, which removes the effect from the entire picture. And then painting with a white brush will bring the effect back on the parts of the picture that I want. So I paint over the eyes, and then that is just too strong for me, so I'm going to lower the opacity of the layer with this effect, and just bring it up a teeny bit. So it's really all about making these changes really subtle. Then the last thing I'm going to do is flatten the image, and use one of my favorite actions on it. In the Photographer Overnight program, I talk about what an action is, and how to create your own actions that will save you a lot of time in your editing. So I just hit play on this action and now I'm going to adjust it to taste. And that is all I'm going to do to my picture. And then I'm just going to go file, save as, a JPEG, and hit OK. So here is the before and after. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more great tips and tutorials to help you take your photography to the next level. Also visit our website howtostartphotography.com for great tips and downloads to help you run a successful photography business.